hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Heavens and earth spread out. So jump on, plus plus motion, and rescue is known. Heavens and earth right now. Motion, upstream, yeah. soothing, softening. He is here right now. Power is here right now. Authority is here right now. Wisdom of God is here right now. Love is here. Love is here. Hey, joy is here. Peace is here. It's in the atmosphere. Hey, it's in the atmosphere of our heart today. In the atmosphere of our heart, heavenly hills. Hey, yeah. in the atmosphere of our heart. Heaven is here. Heaven is here. In the atmosphere of our heart, heaven is here. Heaven is here. Yeah. In the atmosphere of our heart, heaven is here. Heaven is here. So love is here and peace is here, righteousness is here and joy is here, glory is here and your power is here. Heaven's in here. Hey. King of kings in this room, we bow down and worship you. King of kings is in this room, be enthroned with our praises. King of kings is in this room, we bow down and worship you. King of kings in this room, be enthroned with our praises. Be enthroned with our praises. Be enthroned with our praise. Be enthroned with our praise. Be enthroned with our praise. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We glorify you right now, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God. Make manifest in this room today, in the place of our hearts today, God. We thank you right now. This praise, hallelujah. We give you this praise, hallelujah. We give you this praise, hallelujah. We bless your name, we bless your name. We glorify you now, we glorify you now, Lord. Now is the time to give you glory, give you praise, give you thanksgiving from our hearts, yeah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Hey, you're worthy, 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 you're worthy. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Come you. on, somebody shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody unmute yourselves and begin to praise him right here. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you right now, God. We bless you right now, God. We glorify you now, God. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a higher praise. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a shout to the glory, Lord. For the life we live, for the praise that we give. We thank you right now, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Let us begin to worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Bless your name. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Marcus for leading us in that praise and worship and welcome everybody to another live um, virtual Zoom stream of Glorious Remnant Revival Community. I uh, definitely want to extend a huge welcome to our first time visitors. I see some names on here that I haven't seen yet before. So we uh, pray that you've been blessed already and we know that the Lord has a word for you uh, on today. I do want to share my screen to kind of go into a few announcements just real quick. I'm not sure who is um, sharing the screen already, but it's not allowing me to share mine. Okay, give me just one second. Pastor Francina, Pastor Johnson, you may have to mute their phones. Okay, I didn't know I was muted. Sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> um, but I was saying that you could just follow us on Facebook at the Glorious Remnant Revival Community of Florence, Glorious Remnant Revival Community by itself, and that's our Darlington campus, and then Risen Assembly is our third campus that's within our fellowship, and we record live stream on there. So when we are in person, um, you'll be able to watch live videos on there. Um, so you can just follow us on those pages. You can also catch up on all the sermons that each one of our pastors and our apostle uh, preaches at all the different campuses on our YouTube channel. If you YouTube Glorious Remnant Revival Fellowship of Families and you go ahead and subscribe to that and ring the bell so that you can get the notifications whenever there's a new video uploaded, I'm sorry, a new sermon uploaded, then you'll be able to see all the, um, sermons that were recorded in the past. I believe we started in 2020 and then up until now. So definitely follow us on those platforms. Whoever invited you to the service today, you can reach out to them to um, get more of this information just in case I'm going too fast for you and you're not able to write it down. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and get into our tithes and offering. Uh, for anybody in Florence, in Darlington, or Hartsville, <laughs> who wants to give via cash, you can contact Sister Samantha Scott or Sister Laura Preacher um, to do that, and they'll rearrange a way for to meet up with you for you to give your cash. 
Uh, other than that, there's another way you can give, which is via Cash App. And you will Cash App dollar sign GRRC Flow. That's GRRC F L O. And also, we have a text to give. So you're going to want to text the word give to 843 616 0478. And once you do that, there should be a text message sent back to you with all the instructions on exactly what information you need to include to give uh, via text. One thing I do want to uh, make sure I emphasize is very, very important that you definitely specify um, which, I'm sorry, the, the amount you want to give for tithe and the amount you want to give for offering. So don't just send, you know, one big number amount, but you got to let them know how much of that amount is going to your tithe and then how much of that amount is going to your offering. That's very important for finance to know. And we will also post this ways to give at the end of the service as well, just so that if you know if you're not getting it now, you have an opportunity to give at the end as well. And then uh, the only announcement that we have today really is that the ladies of Unity Christian Church, uh, we all know GRC, that's our family. Um, they invite all the women of GRC Fellowship uh, to Jewel, which is a women's conference night. And that's actually going to be on January 16th. Um, it says 2020, but it's definitely this year. Uh, that's on a Saturday. And it's from 5 to 8 uh, at 1631 Trinity Church Road. And it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. They got some door prizes going on, uh, food, and a jewelry swap, which sounds very, very interesting. Um, if you are interested in going, ladies of GRC, please let Pastor Tiffany know. Uh, by January 10th, which is this coming Sunday. So she does need to know by this Sunday so she can provide uh, Unity Church with a head count of how many of us will be uh, traveling over there. So if you got any questions, you can contact myself or you can contact uh, Pastor Tiffany as well. And that includes all the announcements for today. Thank you all. All right. Good. Good evening, um, um, GRC family, and and those who may have um, joined us as guests. Look, I'm so glad to have you. Um, glad to be on with you in this space. Um, you know, I'm I'm starting to get used to the uh, the the Zoom space a little bit, and um, I believe that there's a blessing in it, and so I'm I'm glad. To this says time um, I bless God for you I'm um, that it, it regard to claim his word um, and by even if we're not the same faith still so we, we certainly um, thank God for that um, uh, happy New year to you all um, I'm so glad that we're we're in the we're in the door called 2021. We're in the doorway. We've entered into a door of a free course. And we've entered into a door of no corners. And we've entered into a, to a door of bullseye. We've entered into a door of instructions that are flowing from behind us that, that God has prepared us for this year. And all of you that were, were with us on Wednesday, you understand where I'm coming from. And that's um, and I'm gonna kind of deal with some of those themes again. I can't overemphasize um, in the time that we're in right now in 2021, the importance of honoring and allow, allowing the prophetic to navigate you. We're in a very much prophetic year. Um, 2021 is a prophetic year. I've been feeling just the, the spirit of prophecy, um, the spirit of prophecy um, upon me on, on a personal note. In as I fellowship with God, there's just a spirit of prophecy that is a work and and constantly prophesying and speaking for that which God is doing right here right now in this season and so um this isn't a time to be out out of tune with the prophetic because the Lord is using the prophetic he's using the prophetic to position us this is a year that the Lord wants to position us in prophecy spoken in our past um I want to repeat that there, there's a certain position that God wants us to be in by the time we come out of 2021. It's a position that reflects prophecies that have been spoken in our lives 
over the last anywhere between five to, to 20 years that, that we're going to see ourselves in what we heard as a prophecy in previous years, we take the position of in this year, in 2021. So it's a prophetic year. Um, it's a year to, to be in tune with the things of the spirit, to be in tune with the prophetic voice of God, to know what God is doing. Um, I believe so many times we wind up perishing instead of entering into promise because we don't know what God is doing. The Lord does nothing unless he first speaks it forth through his servants, the prophets. We, we must begin to recognize our prophetic teachers, though God is used our, to know what we ought to be doing. Amen. That's important in this time and in this season. And I've been, I've been caught up in a prophetic place and I'm still there. And I, and, I, and I believe that that's just going to be the type of, I've always preached prophetically, honestly, I've always preached prophetically, uh, but now, now more so than ever, it's important. Um, it's important that you all um, know that, uh, that you all understand um, and don't despise prophecy. Don't quench the spirit. Um, don't allow your mind, the, 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 the form of your mind to reject what God is saying. Don't allow unbelief to, to um, it's, it's not just what we're, what we're thinking. It's, it's the, 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 God is dealing with mind positions. He's, he's not just dealing with how, what we're thinking about. He's dealing with how we think, period. He wants to tear down paradigms for which our thoughts are generated and from which we digest what we're hearing. Um, God is, is using the prophetic to rip down some stuff so we can rip, truly walk in uh, what it is and get in position for where God wants to position us. Am I still choppy? Um, am I still choppy or can you all hear me? Good. You good. I can hear you good. All right. Great, great, great. All right. And if I if I get choppy again, just shoot something out to me. Um, y'all know I like participation, but but then there were some some people who forgot to mute back when I told them to unmute and say something. And so that became somewhat of a challenge. So I don't know how much we're gonna do that today. Um, but I do want to talk to you about some things and I want to I really want to tear down a, 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 form, a way of thinking. Uh, I believe that the prophetic is going after a paradigm for which we think that's going to, to ultimately keep us out of position for what he's doing in this time that we're in right now. Amen. In this time. And so I just want y'all to kind of uh, hear me out um, as I share prophetically. I'm, I'm going to pull on you. I'm, I, I sense an all go. God said, you know, don't don't try to meet them where they at. Challenge them to where I'm speaking to you. God is speaking at a different altitude. He's speaking at a different place. And I hear God saying, you go and you pull them. And those that have an ear to hear and those that want to hear, they'll come up. So I'm, I'm challenging you up right here with this and some of the things that I'm going to share to, um, today. Um, that I believe that is, is, is necessary for 2021 positioning. Um, if you will go to Isaiah chapter two, and I'm gonna read the first four verses of chapter number two, if we could put that up. Um, and, and I'm gonna work from that in, in um, what I sense the Lord um, saying right now. I'm gonna challenge us to be different. See, the, the, many times I believe in our ministry, we haven't completely been what God has called us to be is because we look around and a lot of people are not saying what we're saying. And perhaps the reason why a lot of people aren't saying what we're saying is because it's our responsibility to say it. Maybe the reason why people aren't saying what we're saying is because there's certain things God has given us to say that won't be said if we don't ourselves. And so, you know, I, I need you to fully embrace even all the more your apostolic assignment. There's a reason why you hear the things that you hear. There's a reason why you're going to hear the things that you hear today. 
and a lot of there's not going to be necessarily a lot of people who are saying it. That's because God needs you to say it. God needs you to communicate it. God needs you to put that out there. Amen. It's easy to to parrot. It's easy to be a parrot, hear what other people are saying, agree with that and say that, too. But it's another thing to be a prophet. Um, you know, it's, a, it's another thing to be a prophet to proclaim what other people aren't necessarily saying on a popular level because you're going to get mixed reviews. You're going to get some people who recognize that as the truth. And you're going to get other people that that believe you're everything but a, but a man or woman of God and everything in between. And so I need you all to understand there's a responsibility that comes with the things that I'm sharing. Anyway, let's go to this. And um, I don't want to over talk Isaiah chapter two, verse number one. Um, the Bible reads there and you should have it um, right there on the screen. It says the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Verse number two. And now, now watch what he says. Now look at look at what the how the prophet ship, although he's talking in that time, he's also the prophet is prophesying about our time. Although he's talking about that time, he's prophesying about our time because it goes on to say, and it shall come to pass in the last days. That's the days we're living in. This is a prophecy about our days, although it still spoke to Jerusalem and, and, and Israel. He says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, right, right, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. That's so powerful. And we're going to dig that out and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Verse number three. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach. Oh, we should know that word. We should know that. Yara. He shall aim, he, he shall, he shall uh, instruct. It's the same word, yara. And he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Verse number four, key verse two. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And he's prophesying about our day. Amen. Let, let's pray. Father, I just thank you and I bless you right now that there are ears to hear, eyes to see, and a mind to understand. Look out that no matter of fact that on this evening you give ears to hear. On this evening, you give eyes to see, and on this evening, you give minds to understand what your spirit is saying in this moment to your church. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. I want to warn you again, I'm coming, as I kind of speak from an apostolic standpoint, I'm coming as a prophet too as well. I'm coming to prophesy some things so we can be in position. Now, if you pay close attention to Isaiah's prophecy, just the first four verses of Isaiah chapter two, Isaiah makes it clear that not only is he talking about the last days, uh, but not only does he make clear that, but for those who have an ear to hear, he's, he makes it clear that the last days won't be about fighting, but about establishing. See, we, we've made the last day, see, most people are looking around and saying, man, we're in the midst of a fight. It's time for the body of Christ to fight. But Isaiah makes it clear in all honesty in the last days, it's not necessarily a time to fight. It's a time to build. It's not necessarily a time to fight. It's a time to establish. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. In the last days, it shall be established in the top of the mountains. Everybody's talking about fighting and everybody's talking about warfare and everybody's talking about how we need to raise up and shut the enemy down. But in all actuality, this isn't even really a season of fighting. It's a season of establishing. If we're perceiving the climate, see, if we're perceiving the climate we're in, 
immature, carnal eye, we'll say we need to fight. But if we're looking at it spiritually, we'll say we need to establish. And I, and I know the first thing you say is, how in the world can you say that? Look around you. That's the point. I'm not saying it based off of coronavirus. I'm not saying it based off of the condition of the church. I'm not saying that based off of, glory be to God, the, the, all the, the tension and the division and all the bootleg leaders that are rising up in bootleg churches. I know that there are people in the church. I understand that. I know that there are people in the church who confess Jesus as Lord, who are venturing into new age ideas. Come on. I know they're venturing in incarnation and venturing into motivation and positive energy, trying to mix that with the faith of God and attempting to include that in what we're doing. And I, and of course, as we're seeing people begin to dabble in reincarnation and following energies and, and um, self-help humanistic sources that are trying to mix with God, that the, the, the knee-jerk reaction that we're having in the church is the church's response is what? We need to fight these pagan paradigms and we need to defend the faith of the Lord when in actuality, please hear me, why this is happening is because we haven't fully established the faith to begin with. What if people are straying from, from the faith because we never finished establishing the faith? People, I, I don't believe people are leaving the church. That they, they, They're not necessarily, they're just leaving the church that hasn't fully established herself biblically yet. I believe we're fighting when we're supposed to be focused on establishing. The church has yet, please hear me, I want to talk about the church. The church has yet to establish herself in a place where she can bear fruit that remains. The church has yet to establish herself as the light of the world. The church has yet to establish herself as the salt of the earth. There is an awakening that's going that's hitting us in 2021. It's already started. Matter of fact, we've been in it for, before 2021 even hit. We've been we've been um, um, before the curve. There's an awakening that's hitting in 2021, and the remnant will realize. Watch this: that it's not about fighting off demonic ideas, but establishing the house of God. We're not done establishing ourselves as that which God says we're supposed to be in the earth. The earth is still waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. And so we're trying to defend what we have yet to completely establish. Maybe that's why we spend so much time having to try to defend it. Isaiah 2 and 2, if you can go back there on the screen. Isaiah 2 and 2. It says, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. We're talking about the house and we're talking about establishing the house. The house on this rock, the Lord builds and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. I'm talking about that house. It's not just the legitimacy of the house. It's the positioning of the house. Come on, let's go higher. It's not let me, let me let me talk to you about some things that are that are that are imperative to God in 2021. It's not just the legitimacy of the house, it's the positioning of the house. It's not just if we're establishing his house, it's where we're establishing his house. Come on, I need you to hear the prophet. I'm going to say that again. If not it's not just if we're establishing the house, it's where we're establishing the house. I believe literally that one of the issues as a body is we've attempted to put the right house in the wrong place. God, I'm going to say that again. We've attempted to put the right house in the wrong place. Amen. The position of the house speaks of the purpose of that house. The mountain of the Lord's house is to be established in the top of the mountains and exalted above the hills. It's not just about establishing the house. It's not just about the house, it's where it is. 
And the mountain, I'm going I'm to read that again because I need y'all to get this. And the mountain of the Lord's house is to be established in the top of the mountains and exalted above the hills. Please follow the language. The mountain of the Lord's, we're talking about establishing the house, where, where the house needs to be established. The mountain of the Lord's house, the bottom of it, the bottom of the mountain of the Lord's house is at the top of every other mountain. The bottom of the mountain of the Lord's house is at the top of every other mountain. The house of the Lord is to be established in a mountain above all of the mountains. That position speaks of a purpose. Please, what's the purpose? What is God saying? Why is he saying, look, if we're, in the last days, the people of God are finally going to get a revelation of where to put the house. And when they finally get the revelation of where to establish the house, they're going to they're going to establish it in a mountain above all of the mountains. That position speaks of a purpose. I'm repeating myself because I want to make sure you get this. In other words, watch this. There's a purpose for the Lord's house. That is above and beyond overcoming mountains and getting past hills. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established above mountains. I'm going to say that again. There's a purpose for which the Lord's house is supposed to be established. That is beyond overcoming mountains and getting past hills. God's house is to be established above all mountains and exalted above all hills. In other words, the purpose and agenda of his house is in overcoming our mountains and helping people get past their obstacles. It's beyond and above that. Please hear me again. I, I knew I, I, I'm trying to pull you somewhere now and I know that's challenging to wrap your mind around because of the type of church climate we've been raised in. But it's time to really establish the house in its proper position. The purpose and agenda of God's house isn't overcoming our mountains nor getting beyond our obstacles. It's above and it's beyond that. I know that sounds like heresy and I know that sounds like blasphemy in the current church climate because we've made Yahweh All about helping come out there actually establish the Lord's house. I'm breaking up again. Amen. When did I start breaking up? Somebody help me. Am I? Do I sound clear now? Yes, yeah, you sound clear. clear. Because I know y'all breaking up. Y'all are kind of breaking up my way. Hold on one minute. Let me see if I can fix this. Uh, let me see this. Maybe we can... Um... Maybe we can fix it if I do this. All right, now um, I'm gonna try to see if it's if it's uh, better. Can everybody kind of hear me now? Yes. Good, good. Apostle, you started breaking up when you said it's beyond uh, getting past your obstacles. Great, great, great. Look here, thank you so much. Who's that, is that Miss Tana? That is. <laughs> hey there, how you doing? I'm doing well. Well, good, good, good. Look at it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, he says, the mountain of the Lord's house, now watch this, shall be established on the top of the mountains. Um, that's key that we understand that. See, in other words, what he's trying to say is this. There's 
Amen. The, but beyond overcoming mountains and getting past hills, God's house is to be established above all mountains and exalted above all hills. In other words, the purpose and agenda of his house isn't overcoming our mountains and getting past our obstacles. It's actually a purpose that's above and beyond that. Hello, somebody. I, I just want you to say like that for just one minute. God literally said, when my house is really established, it'll be established above mountains. In other words, getting past mountains and getting over obstacles will not be the topic of my house. My house will start above that purpose. It'll be above the mountains. It'll be above getting through your obstacles and fighting through your problems. I have a purpose for my house that's above and beyond that. Amen. Man, come on, I'm trying to pull you somewhere now because I know for sure that sounds like heresy. I know for sure that sounds like blasphemy because we're in a current church climate that has made the church, that has made ministry all about helping people get over their mountains, beyond their obstacles and through their challenges. Come on, we, we, we're helping people get past their mountains. Do you understand that focus on ministry has actually been the very thing that has kept us from establishing the house of God for which the gates of hell cannot prevail against. Why? Because the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain. God's house is established above that and it's exalted above the hills. Amen. Come on, let that sit on your spirit for just, let that sit in your heart for a little bit because it takes a mind shift to, to gulp that one down. Come on, if you're going to digest that and understand that to be true, um, it's going to take a shift in your thinking. Believe, listen to this. Believing that the house of God's purpose is to help people with their mountains has actually been the very thing that's kept us out of position. We're, we're so busy on mountain level and God's house is on a level above mountains. We're on mountain level. And God's house is on a level above mountains. Just follow me, amen. And I believe you're going to, to get this. See, what God wants us to do in the earth through his church is beyond mountains. Come on. What God wants us to do in the earth is beyond getting past our obstacles and getting over our obstructions. Amen. And until we realize that, I want y'all to hear this because now I'm talking about purpose. Until we realize that, we don't qualify to establish his house. See, that, and I don't believe there's any ministry doing it purposely. I don't believe that there's any church doing it um, in a means for which they mean harm. But there are a lot of churches and ministries building houses, building their entire ministry and their entire um, um, pre preaching platform and helping of people on getting beyond obstacles and making it through and make no mistake about it. Hear me. They, that, if that is the case, if that's the focal point of ministry, they are not establishing his house, whether they realize it or not, they're building their own. God's house is built above that. God's house is for purposes beyond that. Amen. Glory be, is everybody still with me? I know that's a lot. So I'm just going to stop for a minute, unmute yourself and just say something if you're still with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, sir. Amen. I want you to still be with me because I, I, I need y'all to get this because of where we're going. Because we got to get in position. And in all honesty, our position is above mountains. And I'm going to share with you the significance of that and the victory of that in a minute. But I just want us, I want you to, I want to help you understand how much time we've wasted um, because we didn't realize that that's really not the purpose of the house, that the house is to be built above that. Um, I want you to put up Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20. I want to show you all something. Amen. I'm going to take this so, slow. This is, this is Jesus now. He's in a, in a sense rebuking his disciples because there was a man who brought 
his son to the disciples and they couldn't cast the demon out of the man, out of the boy, a, a man who brought his boy to the disciples to cast the devil out the boy and they couldn't do it. And Jesus went on ahead and did it. Then he rebuked the disciples for not functioning in the faith to deliver the boy. And this is his dialogue. This is his dialogue. Uh, he, he says in Matthew chapter 17, verse number 20, it's the New King James Version. It's right on that screen. It says, so Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. Come on, did y'all, I know we've read that a thousand times, but I believe we've read it with a religious lens, right? And I'm going to repeat it and I'm going to share with you in a sense what the Lord was saying from more of a kingdom vantage point. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move and then move. Pay, now, now I want y'all to pay close attention to what Jesus is saying because he's not saying faith is for mountains. I know when we read it religiously, we read it as if it's saying faith is for mountains, but that is not what Jesus is saying. He is not saying faith is for mountains. We've just read it with a religious lens, right? What Jesus is actually saying is any measure of faith beyond the size of a mustard seed is too much to be using on mountains. Did y'all catch that? Any measure of faith beyond the size of a mustard seed is too much to be using. All you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. What, what Jesus is actually saying is faith's highest agenda isn't mountains. You only need mustard seed faith to move mountains, to overcome obstacles, to get past your heels. Facing and overcoming mountains isn't Jesus's high agenda. It isn't his highest agenda for our faith. Amen. That's what he's actually saying. He's saying literally, if we're reaching for faith to face our obstacles and work through our hindrances, we're still trying to get a mustard seed measure. Man, mountains, that's just, you just need mustard seed faith for mountain. But I've called you to a faith beyond mustard seed. So if I'm, if I'm using my faith to get past mountains, to move mountains and get over obstacles, I'm actually still only going after a mustard seed measure. Hello, somebody. Um, it's literally a measure of faith that even if I get it, still won't give me access to function in God's purpose nor take my position in his house because his house is established in a mountain above mountains. And all I'm doing is looking for enough faith to move one. Everybody following what I'm saying? See, Amen. I, come on, come on. I, 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 did did y'all get that? Amen. He never said faith is for mountains in that verse. He just said, man, you only need enough faith that's the size of a mustard seed to deal with mountains. But I never called you to that. I, you have a purpose beyond mountains. Come on. You have a purpose beyond moving mountains. That's why he's, that's why God is upset. He said, oh, ye of little faith. You know, you ain't, I'm calling you to establish my house. You have a purpose beyond obstacles and issues and overcoming stuff that's in your way. Now, now follow me for a minute. The obvious question is, what do we do about the inevitable mountains we all face in the world if our, if literally, if we're, if we're gonna walk with God, we're going to walk at a level above mountains. Just follow me for a minute. Amen. Isaiah 2 and 3. Put that up. I just want to teach. I'm pulling on you. 
this evening. I'm, 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 I'm trying to prophesy some stuff. I'm trying to prophesy a different paradigm, a perspective and, and a different way of, of thinking. If you look at Isaiah 2 and 3, watch it says, and many people shall go and say, no, y'all reading that? No, watch this. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. See, once we actually get in position and once we establish the house, and stop trying to fight the enemy, the non-believing believer, come on, the carnal, the, the unsaved, the many people who aren't walking with God, you know what they're going to say? Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Because the house of God's purpose is above mountains. To go to the house releases grace to change positions. Come on, I want you to digest that for just one minute. Amen. Because the house of God's purpose but mountains to go to the house is released to release grace to change positions. What I'm telling you is no one will be able to enter the house without going up. Come on. Going to the house of God will always be going to another level. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the house of the Lord. When the house of the Lord is established in its proper place. If you are going to go to the house, you're going to have to go to another level. You're not. In other words, to be in the house of God is to be on another level. Otherwise, I can't be there because the house has been established in its proper position. If I'm going to the house, I'm going up. Come on. If I'm going to the house, I'm going to another level in my in my grace of God on my life. If I'm going to the house, I'm going up to another level to the anointing of God in my life. If I'm going up, I'm going to another. I can't go to the house without going up. If I'm in the house, nothing but up. If I'm in the house, something is ascending. If I'm in the house, I'm elevating. I can't get there without going up. If, let us go up to the house of God. Somebody's finally properly established the house and realize it's not about meeting people on their level. It's about calling God's people up to another level. Somebody's finally established the house and realize it's not about going to where people are, but calling people up to where the blood bought them to be. Somebody's finally establishing the house. See, we're about to establish the house that if people go come in, they came up. Come on. If people come in, they came out. You can't come in this house without coming in out of your sin. There's only one way in here. That's up. Come on. You can't come into this house without coming out of your bondage. There's only one way in here. That's up. You can't come in here without coming out of your dysfunction. There's only one way in here. That's up. Somebody's properly established the house. So if I'm going to go to the house, glory be to God. If I'm going to be amongst God's people, if I'm going to worship, there's only one way I can do that. I got to leave the level I'm on. I got to go up. I can't stay where I am. I can't just come and sit and listen to the word week after week without changing. I just just can't come and sit under the word week after week and still be the same way. If I'm in the house, the only way I got there is if I was willing to come up. Come on, I had to change some stuff. I had to come out of some mindsets. I had to come up in my attitude. I had to come up in my perspective. I had to come up in my thinking. Come on, let us go. And the Bible says, and many people, come on, it ain't gonna just be a few. When we finally get the house where it belongs, glory be to God, and many people shall say, come on, let's go up to the house of the living God. Going to the house of God will be going up in anointing. You, you can't be here unless you're going up. Come on, going up to the house of God will be going up in impact. You can't be here unless you're going up. Going to the house of God will be going up in influence. You can't be here unless you're going up because somebody finally established the house in the place it's supposed to be. It's above mountains. It's bigger than getting packed your obstacles. It's bigger than working through your issues. There is a, oh, glory be to God. There is a position. There is a people who finally ascended the hill of the Lord. Yep. And stood in his holy place and put the house where it actually belongs. Come on. If I could just get somebody in here that's excited about establishing the house. I hope this thing clicked to you. Come on. I hope this thing shifted something in you and helped us to realize where God has really taken us and where he's positioned.
positioning us. Could you just unmute yourself and bless God just for one, just for a minute? Come on, let's bless God for the revelation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless your holy name, God. Yes, Lord. Because when your aunt comes, that means she came out. All you got to do is get her to come to the house because we put it in the right place. If I could just get you in this house, come on, this, there's a time coming. There is a moment because we're going to establish the house that if you can just get your granddaddy to the house, it don't matter how steep he is in religion. He's got to come up to come in. So if you can just get your younger brother in the house, if you can just get your cousin in the house, because the, the house, shall, shall, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established. Yes, Lord, on the top of the mountains if they coming in, they got to come up. They can't come in without coming out of stuff. They can't come in without stuff coming off of them. They can't come in without deliverance. Why? Because we finally got the house in at the right height. Come on, the house got to get at the right height. This, oh, Rabba Shanda Robo Koman Siata. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. See, listen to this, because I'm talking about positioning and purpose. When the house is truly established, people will understand that I can't go to the house and stay where I am. We're about to see people change right before our eyes in the house. We're about to see people really be delivered right before our eyes in the house. We're about to see people come into who they are in God while we're worshiping beside them because they came up to the house, the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of God. If I see people are, we're about to establish the house where people understand if I'm going to go to the house. I can't act like I've been acting. I can't live like I've been living. I can't come to church week after week and stay like I am. If I'm going to the house, I must go up. And many people shall go and say, come here and let us go up to the house of God. Hallelujah. Listen to me and, and, and listen to me well. When we properly establish the house of God above mountains, people who need God, will realize I am not demanding God nor his church to come down and meet me where I am, but I'm going to have to come up and go where his blood has granted me permission to go. This is not the time where the church meets people where they are. This is the time where the church establishes the house of God. Come on. I know that don't sound like the religion we've been, we've been ministering out of, but this is the time where we establish the house of God in the top of the mountains. Come on. This is a prophecy about the last days. I just want to shake up some ways of thinking so we can enter into, enter, enter into our position. See, when the house is established, you know what happens? Consumer Christianity is crucified. See, because, you know, a lot of believers think they're supposed to shop around and find the church that best fits where they are. I'm, I'm going to go around and I'm going to shop for the church that best fits my preference, my demeanor, what I, the like, type of songs that I like, the type of preaching that I like. No, no. When the house is established, consumer Christianity is crucified. Literally, in the last days, in the days we're coming to, either people will come up or they'll be lost. See, see either believers are going to actually come, even believers who ain't really believing are going to come up or they're going to be lost. But the, the established church isn't coming down. We're, we're entering into the days where the church won't come down. In the last days, please hear me. I'm speaking prophetically. The church doesn't come down to meet people where they are. The people who will be saved and the people who will make a significant impact for the kingdom are going to come up. And this shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the tops of the mountains. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. God, is. let, let, let me help you understand something. If we're going to be in position and impact the world for the kingdom, this is not a time where God is trying to meet people where they are. 
God brought, God blood bought another level for his people that he's saying, all right, I already came down and died and now I need you to come up and live. I've already went down and died. God, God, he always will meet me where I am. He already did that. He came down and died and met us where we are. Now we need to come up and meet him where he is. Amen. Watch this. I'm going to take that a step further. Amen. I'm, am I breaking up? Can everybody hear me? Amen. We Amen. hear you. Can hear you. Good. Watch this. It says that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and many people shall go, shall say, let us go up the mountain of the Lord to the house. Break you breaking up. His and we'll go up. God is going to be a teaching move. Amen. And a lot of people think, you know, and I'm saying that by inspiration, but there's biblical reflection. It's, it, it's in context. It's, it, it's, it's, it's actually right there in scripture that the, move, the next move of God, everybody's waiting to get it overexcited. It's not going to come by excitement, although it'll be exciting. It's not going to come by enthusiasm. It's not going to be come by us wanting it. It's going to come by us being taught. It's going to come by us being aimed. And this verse validates that. I'm going to keep on reading and I'm going to get to it. We'll go up unto the house above the mountains and he will teach us, right? He will teach us his ways, right? I, I need everybody just to unmute your phone and say, there is a highway. 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 Come on, and make sure you there mute yourself back if you did. There is a highway. There is a higher way of living. Come on, Isaiah 35 talks about the highway of holiness. I don't have to, I don't have time to teach that. Holiness is a higher way. There is a highway. Isaiah 35, verse number eight, talks about the highway of holiness. I'm not going there today. I'm gonna teach that later. But I just need you to understand there is a higher way of living. Come on. Holiness is a higher way. There is a purpose. Come on. And a position in the spirit. Now, I'm trying to call you somewhere. There is a purpose and a position in the spirit that's at a height. That's literally in a spiritual space where mountains are no longer on our level. God, I hope that hits you the way it hit me when I heard it. See, there is a, there is a, holiness is a higher way. It is a way that is higher, that brings us to a height where mountains are no longer on our level. See, it's not that mountains aren't there for those who are holy, but because of the level we've entered into, they're no longer in the way. Hey. The mountains are there, but I've entered into a level where they're no longer in the way because I am operating in the house and the house is in a mountain above the mountains. We don't have to overcome the mountains. We live at a level of life above them. See, I need y'all to understand that God is bringing us to a place where mountains are no longer on our level. They're beneath us. See, it, it's literally a way in which we can do life in our marriage, where our marriage is on a level where mountains aren't. Amen. Why don't y'all ever have any big fallouts? Why don't y'all ever work through something and it takes, it, it's an obstacle and it's a challenge simply because we have now entered into a, a spiritual space. Come on. In, in, in a mountain above the mountains, we, we, we're, we've entered into the house of God, a, a level of life above mountains. So now we can have a marriage with no obstacles. 
What happens when I when when oh, for the next 40 years your marriage doesn't see any major obstacles? And it's not because they're not there, they're just no longer on your level. Man, man, man arguing with me and my wife arguing ain't on my level. I'm on a level above that. Come on. It's 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 just not high enough. Come on. Uh, a temptation to, to step outside of my marriage just ain't on my level. Come on. Rabbi Sandy, that it become Sandy. It's not that it's not there. I, I've just entered into a level through worship, through, through occupancy in a spiritual space. Amen. See, it, it's literally, I, I, and I hope y'all catch this because it's hard for me to articulate this because it's so opposing to the way that we normally think in church it's so other than religious thinking right but our ministry is entering a height in which its purpose and vision is in a place where mountains aren't on our ministry's level what i'm trying to tell y'all is is i ain't preaching nothing new i'm talking about free course come on this is the year of free course this is the year, not where we fight the devil, but we establish, come on, the house of God. Remember position. We get in position in a mountain above mountains. Come on, I want this to hit you the right way. This is the year that we plan as if nothing is in front of us. I'm talking about free course. This, glory be to God. This is the year that whatever plans you're making, in ministry, whatever your plans you're making spiritually, whatever plans you're making career and financially, you are to make those plans as if nothing is in front of you. You will plan literally as if there is no obstacle there because we're establishing the house above mountains. Glory be to God. God, I hope y'all get this. Come on, I just need somebody, just unmute yourself real quick and mute yourself back and say free course. Free course. Free course. Now watch this. The more we plan as if nothing is in front of us, the more that what seems to be in front of us will move out of the way. See, don't plan your business based off of the obstacles your business faced last year. And the obstacles your business faced last year will have to move out of the way. Don't plan what you're going to do for God based off of the obstacles in, that you saw last year. And those obstacles will have to move out of your way. I'm going to read that again. The more we plan as if nothing is in front of us, the more that which seems to be in front of us will have to move out of the way. Amen. The more we plan as if something is in front of us, the more whatever's in front of us won't move. We got to change the way we plan this year. Why? Because mountains aren't on our level. If I'm on a level, mountains are not, why am I going to plan to try to figure out how to get past mountains? Why am I going to put mountains as a part of the strategy, what strategies I need to get beyond mountains if I'm on a level mountains are not on? And the more that I now because, take my position at the level in which mountains are not, and I now see and, and set purpose based off of that level, the more those mountains will have to move out of my way. You know why Jesus could speak to mountains? Because he was above them. Mountains were beneath him. You know, what mountains did he speak to? Come on, mountains of death. Why? He, he was at a level above them. He didn't fight them. He didn't overcome them. He just told them what to do. We're going to see ourselves speaking to mountains because really mountains, we're at levels above mountains. We're not going to spend our time getting past mountains this year, nor planning for mountains, nor overcoming mountains. Amen. Because the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains. Cause I just need you to understand mountains aren't on your level. And the more we set this year's course, 
not including mountains, the more we're going to see the mountains move. Now I'm speaking prophetically. I, I hope you catch this because there's a condition. Those same mountains that have been don't have to move unless we understand we have now ascended to another level. I'm planning my business as if there's no mountains. Man, my, my business plans this year have no mountains. Our, our ministry expansion plans for the year have no mountains. They're not on our level. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody's still with me. Yes, Lord. Y'all still yeah. there? You still awake? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I need y'all to get now. Now this is this is opposes this opposes the way that you think, and I need you to say it's going to be it, it, you're going to have be responsible for taking this word in your heart and letting it take root and begin to shift the way you think. Faith's highest agenda isn't moving mountains, get this, but establishing the house of God in a mountain above mountains. I'm going to say that again. Faith's highest agenda isn't moving mountains, but establishing the house of God in a mountain above mountains. I'm going to say that one more time. Come on, because that's important. Faith's highest agenda isn't moving mountains but establishing the house of god in mountain in a mountain above mountains the lord is working right now and has been to bring us into a spiritual space the mission that has nothing to do with ministering people past their mountains but instead bringing them to a level that their mountains aren't on see i'm not trying to minister you beyond your mountains i'm trying to call you up to a level your mountains can't come to come on come on I, i'm trying to bring I'm, I'm trying to call you to a level your mountains aren't on i'm trying see god is trying to give us a new vantage point come on rabbi shandia see there's a about is it's literally and i think i saw somebody say so if we're seeing where our mountains we're not necessarily on that level it's not if we're seeing them it's how we're seeing them watch this it's like me being on top in my house versus on top of my house there's a certain way the grass and the trees when i'm in on my porch are on my level but if I get on top of my house, come on, I'm at a different level. And because of that, I still see the trees, but they're no longer in front of me. I'm over them. See, this is the, it's not that we don't see them, but we see them from the understanding we're already over. They're actually not in my way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, 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 so now watch this. I'm, I'm going to take this a step further. Isaiah chapter 2, verse number 3. I'm going to read that and I'm going to go into verse number 4. I'm almost done. Come on, I didn't, I didn't kept y'all long enough. Hey Amen. I'm, I'm going to try to try to let you go, but, but I want to speak into you prophetically. This is a prophetic year, y'all. And, and I've gotten the okay of God to speak to you in this manner and to challenge your mind and your heart in this manner. I know God's given me the okay to start bringing us and pulling us into this. Amen. And let it hit your heart. You might not understand it all with your head, but if you, but you know it's truth because it, it, the way it hits your heart. Isaiah chapter two, verse number three, watch this. It says, and many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Now watch this, because this is this is profound. The, the, the purpose for which the people of the people who come to the house of the Lord has act, is actually purified when we get the house in its proper place. When we establish the house in its proper place. The purpose for which people come and hear preaching is purified. If you pay close attention to that, 
people who come to get a word will not be coming to get a word for their situation. People who come to get, according to that scripture, verse three and four, uh, did, did we read verse number four? Oh, let me read verse number four first. My God. Go back, go to verse number four. I'm getting ahead of myself. Now watch this. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords in the plowshares and their spears in the pruning hooks. It says that they will come to the house of the Lord, but their purpose for coming to hear preaching will be purified. The people will not be coming to get preaching for their situation. They will not be coming to get preaching for their obstacle or their struggle. They'll be coming to receive rebuke. Y'all see that? They'll be coming to receive correction. They'll be coming to receive instruction. It sounds like they'll be coming to, to, to now um, um, honor their yara. Come on, their teachers. They'll be coming to be aimed. They'll be coming to be taught. They'll be coming to follow paths already set. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. I, I hope y'all getting this because Amen. this goes back to our eyes being able to see our teachers. All this prophecy connects together. These are the days in which the purposes of the word will be restored because the house of God will be established. Come on, the real purpose for the word. The purpose of the word was never to get, just get you what you need for the week. The purpose of the word was never just for you so you wouldn't throw in the towel. Although it'll get you through the week and although you, you, you won't, um, it, it'll strengthen you and you won't throw in the towel. The purpose of the word again will rise. It'll rise because the bride again has elevated her standard above mountains. Come on, God, God's word is, 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 has a purpose bigger than that. Amen. And a lot of people don't get it, um, but scripture backs it up. Come on. And I'm going to just take you to a couple of scriptures real quick. Second Timothy three, verse 16. Look at this. Second Timothy three, verse 16. It says all scripture. Come on. You can just say you don't have to unmute yourself, but it says all means all. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, which is actually instruction for reproof, another word for instruction, for correction, for instruction in, what's the purpose of the word? What purposes are left out? The purposes that much of the church that's out of position has made the purpose for, right? That, that, that was, not, the purpose of the church was never to give you, uh, the, all that scripture, so you all that scripture ain't given, so you don't throw in the towel. All that scripture ain't given. That scripture is given for doctrine. Come on, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. Why? Now go to the next one. Verse number seventeen: That the man of God may be perfect. Come on, let us go into perfection, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. See, there comes a time when you're furnished. Glory be to God. You would rather be furnished than just be encouraged. You would rather, I'm, I'm trying to help you. See, when you put furnishings in something, come on, if I furnish my living room, that means I put amenities in my living room. I fill it with stuff. Come on, I fill it with couches. I fill it with, with lamps. I put everything in there that's needed. In other words, when you are rebuked and corrected, when you are instructed and directed, you're actually given everything you need to, to maintain yourself. You won't have to call a prayer partner. You'll be able to pray your way through. You won't always have to get somebody to come hear the preacher. You'll be able to preach to them. Come on, you will be furnished. When it gets weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come. You won't need nobody to tell you that. You will stand flat-footed in darkness knowing that joy is right around the corner. You'll be furnished. And once you're furnished, what can you do? You can actually be profitable. Come on, though all the word that you're getting, God can actually start to make a profit from you through the people you interact with on your job. God can actually, you can be profitable. You can actually start drawing people to the king. Come on, you can actually start influencing people for the kingdom. Why? Because you're not needy, you're furnished. But getting a word for, get you through the week is not gonna furnish you. Getting a word that's gonna help you 
uh, um, um, not give up. It's not going to furnish you. I, I want to furnish you to a place where you don't get to the place where you feel like giving up no more. There are furnishings for that. I want to furnish you to the place where you don't, you don't get to the edge where you're about to quit no more. There are furnishings for that. But those furnishings aren't, you're going to make it, just keep pushing. Those furnishings have to do with reproof and correction, instruction, being aimed. Being said, look, you're thinking about that wrong. You need to, you need to shift this. Hello? Somebody. Mm -hmm. You don't get furnished with words trying to keep you, keep you from quitting. You get furnished through correction, rebuke, instruction. Amen, I'm trying to furnish you. Now watch this, 2 Timothy chapter four, verse one through three. I just wanna close my point and I'm going, I, I don't wanna beat a dead horse, but I need y'all to understand the purpose of the word. This is Paul encouraging Timothy. He says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. This is him exhorting Timothy. He said, preach the word. Come on, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. What is he supposed to be doing? Reprove, rebuke. This is going to be what rises up. People are not going to come to church to get a word to make it through the week. People are not going to come to church to get a word so they don't give up. That People are going to be tired of feeling like giving up. People are going to feel, be tired of having to get a word from week to week. I want to be furnished. Tell me what I need to do where I don't go there no more. But teach me, rebuke me, correct me. I'm tired of the up and down. I'm tired of using the word like a drug. Come on. I'm tired of, I'm tired of using the word like a medicine. I'm ready to understand the ways for which I can maintain this level that's above mountains. You're not going to get there with words about mountains. You're gonna get there through reproof, correction, being exhorted and instructed. Come on, can, is, 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 are y'all still there? Amen. 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 This is good. Amen. Verse number three, watch this, verse number three. I'm just gonna read this and I'm almost done. It says, for the time will come, get this, when they will not endure what? sound doctrine but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears man we could we could go into that one amen but the mountain of the lord's house will be established reproof rebuke will be will be valued again people will be thankful for being corrected people will be thankful for being instructed and 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 now um, um, for being chastened, people will appreciate it again. They'll come up to do that. All right, amen. Now, verse four says this, and he shall judge among the nations, I'm closing after this, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. He says the people are going to come up when the house is established, the people are going to come up, but they're going to come up with war, war art instruments, war artifacts, war uh, instruments of war in their hands. And they're going to come up there believing they still have to fight. <laughs> Glory be to God. They're going to come up there thinking the war ain't over. They're actually going to come up there thinking they're going to have to fight up there glory but there is literally a level where warfare is no longer necessary see what did i tell you from the beginning our problem is we think it's a time of war <laughs> and it's actually if we would just establish the house warfare wouldn't even be necessary literally in the last days the days that we're in the people of God are going to have to be rebuked out of warfare. <laughs> the only way they're going to stop fighting is if they're rebuked. The, the people of God are literally, he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And if they receive the rebuke, they shall take their swords 
and make them into plowshares. Make them into instruments of harvest. They shall take their spears. Come on, you know, we use spears to keep people at a distance. You know, they're long. They shall take their spears and make them pruning hooks, instruments to bring in uh, um, harvest, right? And so literally we're in the days that we're gonna have to rebuke the, ch the church out of warfare. Yahweh literally in this season isn't going to rebuke us for being wrong, but for being at war. <laughs> this isn't a time to put together an army, but a time to ascend the hill of the Lord. Shall ascend the hill of the Lord, who shall stand in his holy place, because he's trying to establish his house in the top of the mountains. Amen. We're trying to raise up an army and the Lord is trying to get us to ascend. So y'all hear what I just said? This ain't a time of, to fight. We don't have to actually fight COVID. We just need to establish the house. And when we properly do COVID, can't come up there. Fight, I'm trying to fight out the house. And when we establish the house, racism can't come up there. Why? How, how can you say that, Apostle? Because there's no weapons allowed. <laughs> there, where the house of God is really established, there's no weapons allowed. It's unnecessary. Come on. See, there are certain levels in God we can't go with weapons in our hands. That's what's keeping some of us from going to the next level. I got... You have to be rebuked out of warfare. There are certain levels we can't stay on because usually, I'll, just, I'll say this, there are certain levels we can't stay on with weapons in our hands. That, see, what I'm saying is, Literally, there are certain levels in God, especially the level above mountains, that we cannot remain unless we understand our warfare has been accomplished. Many of us can't stay on levels God brings us on because we don't know how to put down our weapons. Let God bring you to a place of joy and then you break out in warfare. What happens? That level of joy, you descend from that level of joy. Let God bring you to a place of peace. And then you break out in warfare. You know what happens? You descend from that level of peace. Let you feel like somebody's trying to stop you. Warfare breaks out. And what happens? Anybody who's ever been in enough warfare recognizes you can't main the, maintain the level God has brought you to and be in war at the same time. Warfare always causes you to descend in posture, in when you're in a posture of peace or victory or, or joy or grace every single time. Amen. This is not a time. I know it looks like a time of war, but this is actually a time for us to, to establish the house. It's a time to establish the house. This is a time for us to sin. This is a time for us to begin to go to the highway, begin to take the highway of holiness, the higher ways of God. Amen. This is that time. Now, look, I, I just want to pray. I want to pray for a minute to you all. Amen. Um, because there's a lot that was said in this, and I pray that there's an opportunity to even go back um, and I pray that you would have a heart to understand the significance, the prophetic significance of that which I shared with you today. Um, this thing has been sitting in my spirit probably for over a month, but now I, I, it finally, I had pieces of it, but it finally came um, um, to, to full view over the last two days. And um, because I believe that we're, we're called to a step, that's why we're establishing fivefold ministry. We're, we're we're not we're establishing we're establishing five folks we're, we're establishing a fellowship come on we're, we're establishing Darlington we're establishing Hartsville we're establishing Florence 
we're establishing order. Wow, this is, because this is really the, the time for establishing. It's not a time for fighting. And because of that, guess what's about to happen? Nations are going to flow to us. Man, there, are, there aren't people looking for a place that can give them a word to keep them from quitting. People are beginning to hunger for a truth that will put them in a, at, at a level where they won't never feel like quitting again. Come on, that's the mountain of the Lord's house. People aren't looking for a word to help them manage their dysfunctions where I can still, I can still get through life and I have to manage you know, when it rises up, I use certain coping techniques. People aren't, they're looking for the house of the Lord. Come on. They're, they're looking for the place, the truth that they can be brought to a level where they don't just learn how to manage it. Come on. They live at a level above it where the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made them free from the law of sin and death. But we got to establish the house. That's a level of truth on another. That, that, that's a higher way. That's a highway. Come on. I'm hoping y'all getting this tonight. I'm trying to speak to you. I'm trying to speak you somewhere. Give you an appetite for, for ascension and, and greater grace to understand that it's out there and it's available, made available by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is worth more than what we have now used it for. It's time for people to recognize I can, I can enter into a level above these mountains that I don't have to spend the rest of my life learning new catchphrases to get past the current mountain, learning, oh, uh, uh, learning new motivational perspectives to help me manage all of my obstacles. I can act, there is a place, there is a house. Come on, there is a people living in a way. Come on, it, 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 what's that way? It's the highway. It's, there's a people living in holiness. And it's, it's a way higher than that. It's a come on Sunday. It's a way above that. And they don't have all the mountains we I have in their business. They don't have all the mountains I have in their marriage. They don't have all the mountains I have with their children. They don't have all the mountains I have in their health. They don't have all the mountains we have. Man, you know what I'm going to do? Come and let us go up into the mountain of the Lord unto the house of God and let let us let them teach us their ways if all we're doing is teaching them hold come on holiness it's a higher way it's a higher way come on I just want to let you know right now and I'm just going to pray that 2021 is the year that you live above mountains this is the year that you plan your year um not factoring in obstacles come on the, I know there are mountains there, that, but they're not in front of you. Come on. They're, they're not in front of you. They're beneath you. Come on. You, 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 could, you have to. This is the time God permits you to see your mountains from a different vantage point. Hallelujah. Amen. And as a result, come on, as a result, you're about to see free course. Come on. I want to reiterate that to you right now. I want to remind you on day three. I don't. I don't want you see because the devil will try to steal that word to you and won't even let you live in it for 72 hours but i want to remind you right now that this is your year of free course come on this is your year of bullseye this is your year of no corners this is not the year where you have to figure out what to do but there is a word coming behind you right now there's a word speaking to you right now come up come on you have permission to come up above the dysfunction function to come up above the struggle come on to come on up now i'm telling you right now if you're going to come up you're coming up and if you're going to stay you're going to have to endure some chastening come on if you're going to come up and you're going to stay you're going to endure some chastening if you're going to come up and you're going to stay you have to endure some correction if you're going to come up and you're going to stay you're going to have to put them weapons down those weapons you use to protect yourself from people those weapons you use to keep your distance those weapons that you use to watch out for others, to hide what God is doing in your life because you feel like other people can sabotage it. All the stuff that religion has taught us on a lower level, on a lower level, you can't bring them up here. You can't bring them. You have to trust God enough to come up here without that knife. You have to trust God enough to come up there here without that thick skin. You have to trust God enough to come up here without that guard. 
Come on. You you can't stay if you do. You can come up here with it, but you're going to have to change it. Come on. There's some of you, I'm telling you, God is inviting you up right now, but you're going to have to take that sword and you have to make it a, pro a plow share. You're not going to be able to use that to cut people that cut you no more, to defend yourself when you feel like people don't have your best interests in mind. Come on. You can't stay up here with that in your hand. You can't, you won't have to take that spear and make it a pruning hook. You can't use a, a, a weapon to keep people at a distance. Spears alone, they help you, they help you fight and keep people at a distance. You're gonna have to open up. You're gonna have to be vulnerable. You're gonna have to be a part of the community and the family. You're gonna have to go beyond your preference if you're gonna come up and be a part of the house of God and be able to walk in that way. Come on, you're not gonna come up here and stay unless you can say yes to correction, yes to rebuke. Yes to chastening, yes to instruction, yes to improve, yes to reproof. And I'm not either. But if that is you, come on, Rabbi Shandiata, and you're ready to live life above the fear. You're ready to live life above the stress. And you're ready to live life above the challenge. You're ready to enter into your real purpose. Come on, you're ready to operate in a faith beyond the mustard seed. Come on, I dare you right now, just wherever you are, just lift up your hands and begin to bless your God. Come on, I pray for you right now in the mighty name. Come on, in 2021, on the third day of the year, I remind you that this is your year of free course. I remind you this is the year where you hit target after target after target. I remind you this is the year where obstacles are not around you. You have free course. Come on, come up, come up, come up, come on. There's place for you, come up. There's something prepared for you at the table of God. Come up, there's a position prepared for you. You will come out of 2021 in a position that you've never been in in your life. 2022, you will function from that position and it will look nothing like where you are right now. Come on, there's a place on top of the mountains ready for you. There's a place on top of the mountains, come on, of joy and peace and strength. Come on, of 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 Shandia, Tandia, a quickening of Zoe spiritual life. Come on, of living in the wind. Come on, you're about to learn how to live in the wind. Come Rabbi Yadabakon Sandia Dadabakon Yadaban Siata. You're about to learn how to live in the wind. Where are you going? Wherever he's blowing. This is the year that you're going wherever if he's blowing, that's where you're going. Where are you going? Wherever he's blowing. Come on, this is the year that you become a wind woman and a wind man, that, that no man knows where you came from and no man knows where you're going. What I'm telling you right here and right now is you're about to enter into positions where people say, where in the world did they come from? How did they get there? How did that happen? Come on, God is just about to, you're about to go where he blows. It's, it's, it's a work of the wind. It's a work of the wind that's being released into your life right now. I decree it and declare it and I prophesy it over you in the name of our mighty God. In the name of our mighty God, come up, come up here and stay up here. This is the year you come up here and stay up here. No more coming up, but ending up back down. Come up here and stay up here. Uh, God is giving you grace to worship in a level you never worship, to focus on him. Keep your mind stayed on him. Come on, Rabban Siata, walk in the wisdom of the word. Come on, but be able to live out what you know the word says to do. Come on, he's giving you grace like never before. God, I bless you for that. And I thank you for that right now, that it is so. So in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, I just want you to bless God for, with, with a, come on, from a, worship him for, for being, for the establishing. Come on, you, come on, worship him for the establishing, for what we're establishing. But how he's establishing you. Thank Come on. You. Glory yep. be to God. Yep. Glory be Thank to you, God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, no, no. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you. Love you all. Y'all be blessed. Well, I guess we'll be back in this space on Wednesday. 
we'll be back on this space on Wednesday. If, if you could, um, if you could close us out in prayer, could you close us out in prayer? Uh, if you would, uh, Johnny, my, my nephew, Johnny, could you close us out in prayer? Yes, sir. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for this gathering. We just bless you, God, and we understand and we understand and we thank you, God, for uh, just the elevated mindset, an elevated understanding of your word, an elevated uh, 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 perspective, an elevated viewpoint, God. We thank you, God, that this is a year of free course. We thank you, God, that we don't <clears throat> lose your word. We don't drop your word. We just thank you, God, for believing what you said, for trusting you. Uh, uh, we without even fully understanding how you're going to do it, God. We just thank you, God, for uh, 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 thank just, you. just your people, God, gathering here together. We thank you, God, that uh, men and women will be drawn to the light, God, of us uh, just walking in who, who you've called us to be. We thank you for the position thank that you've you. placed thank us you. in, Father, and we just glorify thank you. you. Thank we you. magnify you, God. We thank you for a deep, deep love, a deep passion for you, God, a deep uh, uh, understanding of, of your word, Father. Mm -hmm. We just thank you. We bless you for our teachers. We thank, thank you Jesus. for our apostles. We thank you for our pastors. We thank you for our evangelists, Father. Uh, we thank you, God, for the fivefold ministry, God. We just thank you uh, that we walk in that identity you, uh, without fully understanding what we need to do. It's in your mighty name we pray. Uh, we, we just thank you. Uh, it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank God. Look, I love you. Hey, I love you. Hey, I love you. She didn't get a chance to give the way we give our on the screen. So make sure you, you sow your seed if you haven't, or pay your tithe if you haven't. I love you all. We'll see you on Wednesday. God willing, we'll see you Wednesday. Bless you. Love you too. Amen. Amen.